In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, my brothers and sisters, for those who follow a liturgical cycle of a church year, we have come to the end of such a cycle, an end of the liturgical year. The end of the liturgical year is for us in this portion of the church, is given to us by many names. So in one of our denominational traditions, it is called Christ the King. In another, it is called the Reign of Christ. And still in another, a little bolder than that, our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Whatever the title, it bespeaks us to understand that the Jesus whom we serve is the Jesus in Christian tradition is the King of the world. That he is our King. As is written in the book of Revelation, he is the Lord of Lords, he is the King of Kings. What is instructive for us, however, the Christians, as we seek to interface with the world, our task is not to browbeat them into believing what we believe, and to say to them that Christ is king, therefore you better believe so too. But rather, inform them and instruct them by our lives. That our lives witness to this essential truth that Jesus Christ is indeed Lord of Lords. That he is indeed King of Kings. And that has to be gained with us right there in the center of our hearts, deep down in our beings, that we are to believe that he is king and that we invite him to reign in our hearts. If he reigns in our hearts, then it means that whatever he wills, we will do because we become obedient to the king. In obedience to the king, the life lived therefore will show the others that when Christ rules in our hearts, there is a difference. That the kingly rule of Christ in our hearts will now move to our homes, to our schools, our places of worship, our places of prayer, till it pervades the entire space called the universe. Therefore, it begins with you and me. That we have to believe that Jesus Christ is King. It is one thing to say so. It's another thing to believe so. This leads me to the Gospel reading for today. In this Gospel, and it is very striking as is fascinating, that the Gospel for today, one would have thought that a choice of scripture by the church would have been linked perhaps to the ascension where Jesus would have left this earth to take his place at the right hand of the Father. We would have thought so. Perhaps that might be too triumphalist. But here we have the kingship of Jesus our Lord being presented to us in the heart of the crucifixion. In the very heart of the crucifixion. It sends a message to us and we'll get to those one after the other. I said earlier that it is one thing to say or state, even to write, but another thing to believe. In our Gospel reading, we notice that there was an inscription over Jesus, the King of the Jews. 
that was written over him. In that tradition, the charge of the criminal was always written. So that title over his head was not really a title, it was his charge. That is why you had that back and forth with Herod and the people when they said, do not write that he is the king of the Jews, but rather write that he said that he is the king of the Jews. And Herod said, what I have written, I have written. So they mocked him. It was a charge plus a mockery. Because remember that they put a, pope, a purple robe on him. They put a crown of thorns on his head and said, Hail, King. So it is one thing to state something, but what is the intention? And it's a solemn warning to you and to me that it is one thing for us to come to church on the feast of Christ the King, but it's another thing to believe from our heart that Jesus Christ is King. And that he comes into our hearts to take a place and to rule, to direct our lives. And by extension, through the directing of our lives, to be able to influence others for good. That they too may experience the rule of Christ in their hearts. You see, from a most unusual fellow came the truth. The other criminal, remember there were two on the cross, huh? two to be crucified, sorry. And one derailed Jesus and challenged him, save yourself and us. The other one said, doesn't work like that. The other one said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Two things. For those of us who follow the Good Friday scene, and we come to church and we have the seven words from the cross, we always remember that penitent thief from the other side the promise of paradise where Jesus said to him truly truly I say to you today you will be with me in paradise we're not going there today we are going to the fact that what this man said first of all he called the name Jesus simple as that may look it was very astounding very astounding because we read in the gospel according to St. Matthew that Jesus was given the name, that particular name Jesus. Matthew said it quite well. For he will save his people from their sins. So when that penitent thief called Jesus' name, he understood that here was a man who was being crucified, who is the bringer of salvation and in whom he can be saved even in spite of the fact that he is on the cross for thee. You see my friends, he understood. So whilst on the one hand people wrote it, he understood it. He understood that the cross was merely a way forward. And that really and truly the, what the church came to put in its liturgy a little later on, that Jesus' throne is really the cross. So he was high and lifted up, he was on his throne and, and seeing it from that perfect particular perspective would mean then that death did not strike a fatal blow with Jesus so that criminal understood 
as a result he was able to say to Jesus Jesus Savior of the world my Savior the one who says when you come into your kingdom for this is not the end remember me we are called to have such a disposition we are called to be numbered amongst those who would not talk it who would not write it but who would believe it first then talk it or write it believe it talk it or write it but more significantly act it out I'm recently back from Canada and I was residing in the York region and I said the York region so that we'll understand that law enforcement in that area is the York region I passed by a police station and I took note of the sign explaining which division it was or it is but then what struck me was a single word in inverted commas deeds deeds that's all and I in the remainder of my journey I was wondering what a word deeds and it struck me that perhaps they wanted all of us who reside there whether permanently or temporarily to recognize the police department not only not for their uniform not for what or who they are but for what they do to recognize them for what they do the Christian then is to be recognized for what he or she does we still know that talk is cheap and it's against this background that we look at deeds today as we welcome as we law and as we hail the honorable minister ambassador maskell and other officers staff and beneficiaries of the barbados trust loan fund we are told that holy scripture says by your fruits you will know them one year ago or thereabouts the barbados trust loan fund came into being it came into being i do not know what your terms of reference might be so i didn't even get one so i am speaking from what i can see from the outside came into being because the government saw the need not to give a fish but to teach how to get a boat to go fishing it's a different thing altogether than teaching you to fish because you can fish and then you got going rocks it went above that to give provision or make provision for a boat and it is in getting that boat imagine if I'm fishing in St. George but that's the adage eh? it is in making provision to get the boat in that particular visioning which was the 
end point to an extent built into that and that's where the difference is built into the obtaining of the boat you then taught how to navigate how to fish how to store how to sell now that is good stuff that is the kind of visioning that we need in our society to bring wholeness to bring well-being as we bring enterprise you can tell me if what i saw was wrong because i believe you will have something to say in the service but that's how I saw it. And it means that even though it seemed to have been an economic enterprise, it was a significant, even though seemingly small, a significant bit of social engineering because it brought economy and brought society and brought civilization, brought education and brought the whole human person to another level of human dignity. We therefore have to ask ourselves the question, how can we and other institutions assist in such a way that this enterprise may flourish? It is almost a um, micro thought of that famous picture that we used to watch as children I think it's still around the place now Star Trek with the Star Trek Enterprise to boldly go where no man has gone before if we do this and we try to create economic activity for the well-being of others it suggests to me that we still have a few other things to work on. We build community through it. And I want to say at this juncture that I'm well pleased that a tent is out there, albeit the wrong spot. It should have been on the other side. But I guess the rain sorted out that. But I trust that the tank being on holy ground to showcase whatever will be showcased will be a hint to all of us who might own strips and parcels of land to see how best we can partner with such enterprises, particularly the church, partnering and allowing a holy ground such as this to be used for a wholesome activity such as that. We cannot blow it up and plant food, perhaps not, but we can bring the food and set up a tank and sell. We can take our products and have an open market. Those of us who know this parish and know it well might see this, but I'm not really talking about this. I'm talking about that property in Mung Hill that I am beginning to reorganize and redesign so that it becomes the people's place and not merely being open to hold meetings. The Honorable Minister knows it quite well because almost in front of him. How can
can that be used to take some of these same people and say, here is some land space, bring your stuff, bring your commodities and have them up and let the people come. Gather, build a fellowship, friendship, relationship, and at the same time, engage in an economic activity that can help themselves and others. If we do not go to this next level, then we might have some boats, but we might only end up in rough seas all the time. I say therefore, and I wish to invite the leadership of this great emerging enterprise to see how, as you have said before, the desire for a community-based operation can really take root, can really take root and let these show. When we are able to do this and we can show the people that they have capabilities and innate abilities, they will then be moved to search themselves deeply and realize that there are people too, on the one hand, but more significantly on the other, that there are people because God created them in his image and after his likeness, he created them for good works. And so here is an opportunity for me to make a contribution using the gifts and skills given to me by God alone because he is our king. As the Old Testament remind us that he is our shepherd who will care for us. The caring God, the compassionate God, the God who will see us through. This feast of Christ the King falls in the week of nationhood. And as it falls in the week of nationhood, with the Barbados Trust Loan Fund, we are able to see how Barbados is getting to work at its various levels to create the pride which makes no wanton boast. A great pride. Through these things. And as I say, and let me say to the minister, I belong to the school. Where being small does not mean you are insignificant. You only have to see Barbados's place at the United Nations. Being small does not mean you are insignificant. And because this trust fund does not have in the millions of dollars that you would want to have it in, it does not mean that you are not significant. And I say to you that if you keep on in this way, you will grow from strength to strength and you will not have to make the millions. The millions will be made for you. Millions not only in the dollar sign, but millions in the life and development of a people, a people even yet unborn. But I say to you, finally, those who are beneficiaries or have been beneficiaries, take this gospel and learn something from it. Our Lord Jesus Christ was not revealed to his church as King and Lord. He came first as a babe in Bethlehem. He went through the rough and tumble of Palestine. He went sometimes without eating where his disciples had to say to him, Master, come and eat. And what did he say? My meat is to do the will of him who sent me and accomplish his work. Summary, an effort and even a sacrificial effort will be needed. Like our Lord, if he rules your heart, you will know that you have to be among your people whom you are willing to serve with your commodity. That you must exercise care and patience and compassion and love as he did. And as you serve them 
and they respond to you you touch them with great care I believe that this is an enterprise that can save the basics of our community it can add to community building and to people building and I trust that God Almighty will be in his son Jesus king of that place that you hear the words of Christ the king for as much as you have done it to the least of these you have done it to me when you have done this for this nation you can only hear well done good and faithful sir so we love you and we welcome you and we thank you for choosing the house of god and coming on this feast of christ the king to own christ as your king to learn from him and may all of us leave here recognizing and acknowledging christ our king live out the kingdom values and the kingdom value which we must take with us is the kingdom value of love love one another and we will go far amen <laughs>